Hello students, welcome back to your English session. Today we will talk about a very famous short story writer that is Kate Copen and her literary work. So the title of the story is Her First Party. Let's proceed. Before we talk about her short story, Her First Party, we will know about the author. Kate Copen was an American author of short stories and novels based in Lusenia. She is considered by scholars to have been a forerunner of American 20th century feminist author of Southern. The Century Magazine, Atlantic Monthly and Vogue. These are the some of the famous uh, literary work of her time of 20th century. She was from Lusenia, hence most of her characters in her stories are also the resident of Lusenia. Let us have a short introduction of the story. As a newly recovered addition to Copen's body of work, her first party is perhaps most significant as the tale that punctuates the end of the author's publishing career. So this was written, the story was written, uh, I mean at the end of her career, her publishing career. So this was the last work of hers. Appearing within a year of her death, it comprises Copen's final words to be read by her contemporaneous public. Her first party displaces the woodchopper and Polly for this distinction. Before this writing, these two tales were thought to be Copen's last set into type, both in 1902. The content of her first party illustrates that to the last, Copen was willing to voice her own subjective truth through her fiction. It means, uh, children, that Copen was a feminist, that we know about it. Copen was a feminist, so she was willing to voice her own subjective truth. Means whatever she was feeling, her feelings, her emotions, she used to put into her writing work, into her fiction. A courageousness for which we value her today. So she was a very courageous lady and she raises her voice for the women in society. A product of that courage, her first party resembles in subject and style some of the fiction for which Copen is best known. It critics white debitate and tradition through an expert use of point of view and the surprise double ending. So let's start the story. The party dress, a white organdy and touches of delicate pink, was finished and hung beneath the chandelier in Millie's room. So Millie is the major character of the story, her first party. So, it is told by the writer that in Millie's room, beneath the chandelier, her party dress was hanging. She had never been to an entertainment of any importance. Who is she here? Millie. Millie had never been to such an entertainment of any importance. Means uh, she had never been a part of any of the entertaining event and was not quite old enough to go to one now and still she is quite small, quite young to go to attend such kind of important events. But this was not wholly a grown-up affair. One of the arguments which she and her brother Bob, Bob is the another character of the story who is the brother of Millie, had brought to bear upon their mother. Bob's class was giving it over means this event was given by Bob. Millie's brother's class over at College Hall only a few blocks away. There were to be charades, tableaus and recitations. So as far as the events are concerned, 
children sharad is a game in which some of the players try to guess a word or phrase from the actions of another player who may not speak so some gestures uh, the team has to show some gestures and accordingly the another team has to give the replies tableaus we all know that scenes where events and people from history are presented by a group of actors who do not move or speak means in tableaus we are not allowed to give any movements or any of the speech with gestures and actions only being in a posture of a statue uh, one has to present a scene recitation the recital of any of the poem so these were the events these were the activities which are going to occur in that event in all of which milly was to take a leading role all her acquaintances were going everybody that was anybody between 16 and 20 was going so in that event the age group which was there that was between 16 to 20 but surely none looked forward to it with such rapture such blissful anticipation such expectancy as did milly means milly was the most excited participant of that event means she was very much excited as she had never been the part of uh, such kind of event so she was very much excited to participate in such event all night she anticipated she hoped anticipated hoped all night she anticipated the event in dreams and all day she posed and declaimed or danced through the halls and apartments as if possessed by the very spirit of tripsico the very spirit of tripsicore so uh, let us understand what is tripsicore tripsicore is according to the greek mythology tripsicore is the name of the goddess of dance and music so here we are finding that she was so excited she was dancing in such a way that it seemed that uh, the very spirit of tripsicore the goddess of dance and music was there in milly at the time of excitement if anything were to happen milly sickened at the th thought means milly was so excited so happy to attend that event that uh, she can uh, that the thinking the thought even of anything bad happen of or any uh, hurdle will come in that way in that in her participation make her sick but what could happen except rain milly was thinking in that way what could happen except rain perhaps the weather prophet was taking care of that I mean she was praying that there should not any hurdle come in the way of her participation she was so excited to attend that be sure her aunt mildred a couple of 100 miles away was quite sick and her mother was wearing a saddened face the times again the party dress might catch fire and burn up so here we see that uh, milly's aunt mildred who was living who was residing a couple hundred miles away was very sick and due to that her mother becomes quite sad so she had a doubt milly had a doubt that maybe she can her aunt sickness may be the hurdle uh, hurdle between the milly and the event so she was feeling quite insecure and she was thinking in that way the negative thoughts were coming in her mind that her party dress might catch fire and burn up and there would be no time to make another means she is not going to get a chance very soon to make to participate in such another event she herself might take a tumble in one of those fantastic flights through the house and sprain an ankle now here what does it mean the writer means here that milly herself might take a tumble take a tumble quickly uh, going up and down in the house 
and then sprain an ankle. So means she was very much excited as well as well as she was uh, feeling insecure about the hurdles, the problems coming in her way. So mm -hmm. she was uh, thinking in that way. She, the, the thought sobered her for 20 seconds or less. Whenever she was thinking in the negative way, she becomes quite low. She becomes quite nervous. So for 20 seconds or less. At breakfast, the morning of the party, Millie found it difficult to keep a pretense of interest in anything so prosaic as toast and mutton chops. So now here we are finding that the writer is saying that Millie found it very difficult to keep a pretense, to keep an interest in anything so prosaic as toast and mutton chops means it was so boring so Millie couldn't keep her interest. She plied Bob with questions. She worried him with her misgivings. Let's proceed. She quitted her seat to embrace her mother violently. Then she was off to the kitchen and dragging Kitty the maid up to flights to view the creation in pink and white beneath the chandelier. I mean, she was so excited that she dragged her maid named Kitty to the chandelier to show her dress, her party dress, which was there in pink and white combination. A while later, the restless Millie stood out upon the front steps, gazing up into the misty October sky in search of weather indications upon which she might base some pronostications of her own. It was then that the postman came along with a polite greeting, handed her the morning mail, quite a batch of it. She slowly turned into the house, glancing over the circulars and letters and in a manner exhorting them. There was a letter to her mother from her Aunt Jane. She knew the stiff, formal handwriting mailed from the distant town in which her aunt Mildred lay sick. A dread that for the moment made her feel faint took possession of Millie. So children, this was a uh, half of the story which I had explained in this video, part 1. Now next in part 2, the rest of the part will be explained. Hopefully, I made the things clear to all of you. Thank you.